Hi friends, today let us discuss Hebbian's learning rule. This is the third learning rule in neural networks and this is the definition of Hebbian's learning rule and this is the basic definition explained by the Hebbian in the name of the scientist. So what it exactly means is when an axon of cell A is needed to excite a cell B and repeatedly and persistently takes place in firing it some growth process or metabolism takes place in one or both cells such that A sufficiency as one of the cells firing B is increased. That means if let's take it two cells one is A and one is B and A is very nearer to B such that it can it can find some information on B every time repeatedly then some growth process or some metabolic changes will take place generally it's just like a friendship if two persons are there and one person is keep on keep on touching the second person then there may be some relation between the there may be some development of relationship or development of friendship between two persons and just like that this has been explained by the hebbian at very first time and come this was made in neurobiological context completely it depends upon neurobiological concepts only so those two cells are biological cells so now we can explain this same in two other ways in coming slide and that is like this if two neurons are on either side of the synapse or actively or activated simultaneously then the strength of that synapse is selectively increased. For example, there are two friends and one friend is saying hi and at the same time if second friend is saying hi, there is some relation between these two friends and that is keep on increasing if we keep on doing the same thing. That means two neurons on either side of the synapse are activated simultaneously. So both the friends are saying hi at the same time or one of the other. With, within we having very less time gap then though the relation between those two will be improved that means it's selectively increased and if two neurons on either side of the synapse are activated asynchronously then that synapse is selectively weakened or eliminated for example if friend a is saying hi to b and friend b is not at all saying hi at all then after some days friend A also gets bored of friend B and he will see some other friends or he will simply neglect the relation. That means the relation is weakened or eliminated. That's why these based on one Hebbian's hypothesis, I mean based on one Hebbian's postulate or one Hebbian's rule, we have divided into two rules based on our context and this is our neural network context and such such synapse is called a Hebbian synapse okay if such synapse is called Hebbian synapse now what are the ca main characteristics of Hebbian synapse the main characteristics of Hebbian synapse are it's time dependent highly local strong interactive mechanism and it is having conjunctional or correlated correlational mechanism and let us see all these things and these are the characteristics of the Hebbian synapse to improve the synaptic efficiency as a function of correlation between the presynaptic and postsynaptic activities okay previously we all we discussed them as cells but now those are discussed as presynaptic and postsynaptic activities as the relation between two cells in the previous case is defined as synapse okay that relation is synapse so the cells become one is presynaptic and second one is post synaptic activities okay that chain you have to identify next so what are the main characteristics of these things so it's time dependent mechanism what does it mean it refers to the fact that the modifications in a Hebbian synapse 
depend on the exact time of occurrence of the presynaptic and postsynaptic signals. That means if cell A is saying hi, cell B has to say hi at the same time. If cell A is saying hi and after so much of time cell B is saying hi, then there is no relationship. That means the relationship may be depressed or it may be eliminated. So time is very much important. So it is a time dependent mechanism. Coming to local mechanism. So the locally available information is used by the Hebbian synapse to produce a local synaptic modifications. Here the information is used locally available to the synapse. It, it cannot take from some the far distance or something else. Okay, it's the information should be locally available. And interactive mechanism. So a Hebbian form of learning depends on a true interaction between the presynaptic and postsynaptic signals. The interaction is deterministic or statistical in nature. So this, this depends upon st some statistical equations and some equations will be there. So this is called interactive mechanism. Coming to conjunctional mechanism, the condition for synaptic efficiency is the conjunctional of conjunction of presynaptic and postsynaptic signals. Conjunction means if one operation has been completed and the second operation has to be started or has to be performed, then if some series of actions has to be performed one by one, it will be done. So if in that series if our synapse is there, it will be it will go in that flow only. So that is called conjunctional mechanism. And similarly, there is one more thing, it's a correlational mechanism that means it depends upon the relation between presynaptic and postsynaptic signals. In the previous case, conjunctional mechanism means if there are series of actions, of course that is also relation between presynaptic and postsynaptic, but if that is series of action and that will go in one round, if our synapse is in between that, it has to be go in the same manner. So there, there is no specifically we cannot, uh, that means we the work cannot be done specifically. Okay, if that is that should go in a flow but in correlation mechanism the relation between presynaptic and postsynaptic signals based on that relation only the synaptic efficiency will be depending okay that's the that if that is the case then that thing is called correlational synapse here it is listed it is correlational synapse yeah Coming to synaptic enhancement and depression, here the synapse is divided into three parts, I mean three different synapses. One is Hebbian synapse, anti-Hebbian synapse and no synapse, no Hebbian synapse at all. So what is meant by Hebbian synapse? It increases its strength with positively correlated presynaptic and postsynaptic signals. If the presynaptic and postsynaptic signals are positively correlated, then the strength will be increased. Coming to anti Hebbian synapse, if the presynaptic and postsynaptic signals are negatively correlated, then the strength will be, in, I mean, the relation will be strengthened, otherwise, it will be weakened. If it is positively correlated, then it will be weakened. If it is negatively correlated, the strength will be strengthened. So that's the anti Hebbian synapse, just opposite to the Hebbian synapse. Both Hebbian and anti Hebbian synapses are time dependent, highly local, and strong, interactive in nature. Of course, they are acting in, in opposite manner. Coming to non Hebbian synapse, it doesn't involve a Hebbian mechanism of either kind. It, it, doesn't increase the positively correlated presynaptic and postsynaptic relation and it doesn't decrease it okay so it's a non hebbian synapse so the hebbian rules never be accepted in these type of synapses so in the next thing now we need to see the mathematical modeling let's consider a synaptic weight w k j that means it is a synapse from j -th neuron to k -th neuron of neuron K with presynaptic and postsynaptic signals 
denoted by x j and y k respectively x j is the input or presynaptic signal and y k is the post synaptic signal if that is the case how the adjustment applied to the w k j will be at time n and that will be expressed like this delta double delta w k j is equal to function of y k of n x j of n simply where function is the function of both post and presynaptic signals so it is a function related with both presynaptic and post synaptic signals let us see what is that function also actually there are two types of hypothesis one is Hebb's hypothesis second one is covariance hypothesis so coming to Hebb's hypothesis the change in weight is expressed as delta w k j is equal to eta y k of n x j of n where eta is learning rule as we know previously where y k is output and x j is input or you can call x j of n is the presynaptic signal and y k of n is the post synaptic signal this can also be referred as activity product rule okay this is called as activity product rule next coming to covariance hypothesis what is meant by covariance hypothesis here the presynaptic weight signal and post synaptic signal are taken from the departure of the averages where x bar and y bar are the average values of all the things that means if x bar is the average value of all the presynaptic signals and y bar is the average value of all the post synaptic signals now the departure or the difference of one one thing maybe xj the difference of xj from x bar is taken and yk from y bar is taken so that's why this is the difference uh, where eta is you know this is the learning rate and x bar and y bar are the averages where uh, average values of x and y so determine it, it determines the sign of synaptic modification and next covariance yeah in particular what will happen it allows it allows a convergence to a trivial state if xj is equal to x bar and yk is equal to y bar if it is xj equal to x bar and yk equal to y bar it definitely converts at a one point that that is the origin point so it allows a what it exactly gives us it means it allows a prediction of both potentiation that means if it is increasing the weight or depression so it will give you the prediction how if suppose if what is the relation between xj and x bar and yk and y bar depends on these relationships we can say that whether the, the weight is increased or decreased yeah this is the graph this is the graph between weight and output i mean yk post synaptic signal and the graph is like this passing to origin if it is Hebb's hypothesis and the graph is like this for covariance hypothesis so the slope is theta xj if you see the formula you can understand it and this this slope is theta into xj minus x bar and this is the value minus theta y bar xj minus x bar and this is eta xj minus x bar so this is basically comes from the formula and the difference is in Hebb's hypothesis it is passing from through origin and in covariance hypothesis it is not passing from origin so the comparison is like this both delta w on yk is linear and interaction of yk in Hebb's is at origin and that of covariance is yk of y bar and how we need how we can see this that means if the synaptic weight is enhanced if xj is greater than x bar and yj is greater than y bar if it is depressed if xj is greater than x bar and yj is less than y bar xj is less than x bar and this if it, it will give you one minus sign 